Smile. People like other people's smiles, even if you only have three teeth left. It works every time. People love smiles. They do. It warms them up. It says that you're confident even when you're not. It does. It says that you're confident. Even if you got crooked, yellow, coffee stain, spinach in them. <laughs> Am I okay? <laughs> even if. Come on, just try it on for size. Look at your neighbor and smile. Come on, smile. Smile. Guess what smiling does? What does smiling sell? What does smiling sell? It sells confidence. It sells a future. It sells something within. When, okay, now look at your partner and don't smile. Just frown. Glare. All right, you can stop. I'm scared. Go back to smiling. First of all, a smile makes you look at least 10 years younger. At least 10 years younger. I am not kidding you. A smile is at least 10 years younger, okay? It changes your entire atmosphere. A smile changes your whole body language and it changes the tone in which you're speaking with. A smile also breeds curiosity. It breeds curiosity. It makes people curious. How many of you ever walked through an airport? And what do you see? People, oh, and I'm sorry, with their cell phone at a Big Mac, tugging some, you know, their roller bag behind them. Okay? I've done this. If you walk through an airport and you smile, it stops traffic. It does. How many are driven in rush hour traffic? I know that you all look to your right and to your left. I know you do, we all do it. What happens when we pull up to a stop sign? We look to see who's looking at us. We do. Okay, this is people. Learn more about people than you do your product line and you'll be unusually successful. People love smiles. They're attracted to it. It breeds curiosity. It says you're confident. It says you know something they don't know. And it says you got something they don't have. How many of you have people in your life that they're always down? How many of you have people in your life that they're always got a frown? How many of you have people in your life that they're always negative and complaining? Do you like to be around them? Why? Does it feel like you need to take a shower after you're done communicating? Yes. And so what I'm telling you is, is that people enjoy laughter. They enjoy life. They enjoy smiles. They enjoy people that are confident. They like being around people that exude that life. And a smile exudes it. But Danny, I've got nothing to smile about. I'll give you something to smile about. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. I'm not saying they missed their alarm. <laughs> so what I'm saying. I'm saying they didn't get up. Listen, you've been conditioned to look at everything that's bad and wrong and horrible and terrible. Trust me, the news sells you it daily. The news sells it to you every single day. And if you want to position yourself to be hearing that every single day, pretty soon, this goes to... That's what it turns into. Isn't that true? It's completely true. You have to decide for yourself if you're going to wear all your teeth or not, even if they're fake. And these days you can't tell anymore. <laughs> Do you hear me? I am so serious. You must smile. If you walk through this hotel smiling, I'm t we were in a hotel in Atlanta uh, just a month ago. I was blown away. I was blown away. I, in fact, in the back of this hotel, it says smile equals money. 
Yes. Yes. Maybe you need to put that near your phones for those of you that talk to people on the phone. Did you hear me? Smile. You have to smile. When you do, you, you are breathing life. You're exuding life. Even if you don't feel like it, do it anyway. Come on, try it on for size right now. Pepsi it. Ding. Tell me, how do you feel when you... Come on, lady. Come on, lady. You got that fun wild hair. I want to see your teeth. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at you with the cool necklace, the multicolored jacket, the brown curly... Yes, some teeth. There's some teeth. And she's red. <laughs> okay? So smile. That's how you become attractive to other people. I know that seems elementary, but people have forgotten how to smile. And here's the other thing. They're waiting for a circumstance to cause them to smile. 98% of the population is the effect of things. 2% of the population is the cause of things. Did you hear me? You've got to be the cause, not the effect. So 98%, but I'm just not happy about nothing. That's because you're a victim of circumstance. A victim of circumstance is somebody that is always affected by their circumstances and everybody else that's around them. A 2%er, here you go walks into a room to change the room, not walks in the room to be changed by it. A two percenter establishes the atmosphere, establishes the environment. You see, when I first got into business, I didn't, I was not comfortable. I was intimidated by people. I didn't like being in crowds of people. I was a complete loner all the way through school. One friend I had, one that she died when we were 23. She was my only friend, so I called her my best friend, even though she betrayed me constantly and gossiped behind my back. It was terrible. It was. It was. She was not a friend. Not anywhere near a friend. But she was my only one. But here's the deal. If you are directed by everything, and that's how you live your life, you are easily led into destruction. Here's the truth. Here's the truth. I don't feel like smiling. I don't feel like it today. I think I'm PMSing or I'm menopausing. And men, you do it too and you know it. <laughs> Just from being in the environment <laughs> of one that is. I don't feel like it. If you are that easily led by your feelings, then you'll easily be led away from your destiny. Listen, friends, 98% of the population is led by feelings. They're led by their emotions. Wake up. Wake up. So therefore, we go to where it feels good. And I, ooh, ooh, gosh. Just had something sharp go in my mouth. I'm going to have to say it. This one drives me crazy. I don't feel led. Because in a situation, there was some resistance. And people think, ignorantly, they've been sold and seduced into some bad theology. Well, if it doesn't feel good, then it must not be God. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. You trying to tell me that Jesus felt like going and hanging his body on a cross? I don't think so. He was sweating blood just moments before, crying out, saying, please take this cup away from me. Why? Because he didn't feel like it. He didn't want to. But he, pa he passed the feelings and did what? Obeyed. My book says, think on these things that are noble and good and praiseworthy. Why were we commanded? That's not a suggestion. That's not a suggestion. Think on these things that are noble and good and pure and praiseworthy. Why? Because if you don't, your head is going in the wrong place. <laughs> are you hearing me? Think on these things. Why? Because it produces a smile on your face, makes you a light on a hill, sets you apart from the rest. Listen, write this down. Find out what everybody else is doing and do the exact opposite. Find out what everybody else is doing and do the exact opposite. You're not supposed to fit in with the 98%. You never were called to the 98%. You were never made for that uniform they wear of frowning. 
It's not for you. They don't make it in your side.